how did a physicist from New York City end up as a prominent thinker and writer on agriculture? This is what we'll be exploring today, November 20th, 1991. I'm Jane McLean of the Alternative Farming Systems Information Center of the National Agricultural Library. As part of a series of oral history interviews we're conducting with leaders in the fields of alternative or sustainable agriculture, my associate, Jane Gates, will be talking today to Dr. William Lockeretz. He is a professor and researcher at Tufts University in Medford, Massachusetts. Besides authoring or editing many books or articles, he is on the editorial boards of several professional journals and is the technical editor of the American Journal of Alternative Agriculture. As a speaker, he is much sought after for his knowledge, his zest, and his often unconventional views. We look forward to hearing from Dr. William Lockeretz. It's really a pleasure to be here in Boston at Tufts and have you sit still for a few minutes to talk to us. But I want to establish, first of all, what do I call you? You can call me Willie for starters. All right, Willie. Willie it is. That's how I've always thought of you, but looking at uh, Dr. Lockeritz or Professor Lockeritz was a little intimidating, so I wanted to be sure. Uh, I wanted to ask you, first of all, Willie, about your background, where you were born, and, and about your family. Okay, how far back do I go? Well, as far back as you want. Well, um, my parents were both uh, children of immigrants who fled from uh, anti-Semitic oppression in Eastern Europe. Uh, at the turn of the century, and my parents were born in New York, and I was born in New York. I went to the public school system in New York, and then uh, to City College in New York. Mm -hmm. So basically, until my college years, I was a New York City boy. Mm -hmm. Did you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have an older brother who uh, lives in England now. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about your school experience. Well, as I said, I went to the public schools. Hated most of them. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, they're very. Uh, oppressive atmosphere, a terrible place. Mm -hmm. Let's move right along. High school was better. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Science High School, which was a, a school that you had to get into by admission. It had an excellent student body and a fairly good faculty. Um, then City College. I liked City College very much. Uh, I took a um, physics major there and liberal arts. And that, that, or I liked that. Um, then I went to Harvard for graduate studies and physics, and I got a PhD in Harvard, from Harvard in uh, 1972. In 72. Yeah. But you were interested in science early on, if you went to a special science high school. Oh, well, I was interested in science from the time I was a kid, sure. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Was there any particular thing that you can remember that got you interested or no. curious? No. Science in general appealed to me. I didn't pick a field until I was in college. I had a, a very good elementary physics teacher in college in my freshman year at CCNY, and that was uh, what made me decide to go into physics. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're no longer in physics. No. <laughs> you, you noticed, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. Well, tell us about that. It's a very unusual switch. Well, near the end of my graduate program at Harvard, about two years before I got my PhD, that was around 1969 or 1970, uh, you will recall that was a time when the environmental movement was coming on strong. Yes. And I was very interested in that. I was very sympathetic with in, to environmental causes. And although I liked physics very much, um, I had the feeling that I would be more satisfied working in a kind of science that had a little more direct practical relevance to real world problems. And since uh, environmental uh, concerns were coming on strong then, and I was uh, kind of caught up in that, I decided I'd look for a way to put my scientific training to work on, on behalf of environmental improvement. So I finished the PhD in my original uh, program, but right after that, uh, as a postdoc, I, just, I moved to, uh, I switched fields in a rather big way into general, unspecified um, environmental science. You know, in those days, a postdoc was what it should be, which is an opportunity to learn and expand and to be exposed to new things. It wasn't just a, 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 an underpaid professional position. So I went to Washington University in St. Louis. At the time, the Public Health Service was supporting environmental postdocs, and I had one of them for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, and after those two years, 
in which I did some other things. Um, agriculture would be, was the area that I started to concentrate on in 1973, and that's what I've been in ever since. Mm -hmm. well, before we talk more about agriculture, which of course I want us to do, I wanted you to talk about your education because you had mentioned um, the fact that you had been supported in your in seeking an education. Indeed. Uh, actually, it should even go back to my um, parents. Uh, my parents were both born into very poor families, but New York City had had the foresight in as long ago as 1847, I think it was, about, in other words, about 15 years before the better known Morrow Act. Uh, to establish free higher education of quite good quality to city residents. Uh, if it hadn't been for that, my parents, it would have been out of the question for them to get a college education. Mm -hmm. They both became school teachers in New York City. So the city's investment, uh, you can say, was really paid back. Uh, and then I also went to City College, as did my brother, which was quite a good school, and it was absolutely free. If you could pass the admission test, it was free. I even got a state scholarship to cover pin money, incidental expenses, so it didn't cost my parents anything. Then when I went to Harvard, I was supported by a National Science Foundation graduate fellowship, so that didn't cost anything either. And then when I d wanted to switch fields, uh, I was supported for two years, as I mentioned, by a public health service postdoctoral fellowship. So my education was free, um, and a, a good thing, too. Um, um, I appreciate this all the more because these days it seems that that kind of thing is just not available. Every day you read cutbacks in this public uh, education mm -hmm. program, cutbacks in this scholarship program, everywhere less and less. And I think that's very short-sighted. I feel sorry for kids these days who, who or their parents who have to, um, who are looking for an education when, when the money is just not there the way it was 20 and 30 years ago in my case. And so I think it's very short-sighted. Um, City College turned out more than its share of, of people who paid back the uh, investment very well. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about slightly more illustrious wow. people like Jonas Salk, for example. Um, and I think that to put everything on a kind of private, on, on the basis as though everything were to be reckoned by private corporate accounting, which it seems to be the way they do things these days, is, is very short-sighted. Anyway, I was glad that I got my education at a time when there was reasonable public support for that sort of thing, and I, I wish those days were back again. Well, you're not alone. <laughs> but you were even supported uh, in your change, in your quite drastic change of field. Yes, the public health service uh, environmental postdoc that I got allowed me to feel my way around for two years, mm -hmm. um, which I needed to do, obviously. And so that's part, I count that as part of it as well, mm -hmm. yes. So from Washington University, you came to Tufts? No, I was first at a, uh, did some work at, on solar energy at a place in Boston, mm -hmm. which is uh, now extinct, and mm -hmm. not too many of us shed too many tears over it. Uh, in 1981, I came to Tufts, so I've been at Tufts now for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're active in agricultural research, but yes. you're in, officially in the School of Nutrition. Yes. Uh, we like to think that nutrition and agriculture have something to do with each other. <laughs> uh, What's the saying? Of how can you not be anyone who's interested? Everyone has to be interested in agriculture if they eat. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, and the School of Nutrition at Tufts takes a broad interpretation of what nutrition means, and we like to cover as many aspects of the food system as we can. So certainly, agriculture is a part of the food system. Though uh, I'm pretty at home there as far as what I do. In, in a broad way fitting in with the program of the School of Nutrition. When people start asking me detailed questions about should I eat more of this or should I eat <laughs> less of that, I, I send them to somebody else. Yes, refer them down the hall. That's right. <laughs>